Uh, thank you for the floor, uh, dear members. The main motivation for drafting this opinion was to address the situation in my region, which I think in many ways is representative of many regions that you represent. Bratislava is a capital metropolitan region, and it's also the smallest Slovak region, but it has the highest level of urbanization, and it's very, very different from the rest of my country, uh, which uh, is predominantly rural. For many years, Bratislava region has been classified as the more developed one, according to the Eurostat, but the situation in real life is uh, very different. For the last decade, the Bratislava region is scoring in the top 10 wealthiest regions according to the GDP, which is in high contrast with more complex measurements. For, for example, and for instance, with the methodology of social progress index, Bratislava falls to the place number 181 out of 272 European regions measured. It's very difficult to explain the citizens uh, why we only have limited access to EU funding because we look rich on the paper, as well as it's very difficult to clarify to the European Commission that our region profits from the high GDP in a very minor way, and also to discuss with our national level politicians a new model of distributing the tax revenues and compensations. Since presently we are preparing the new cohesion policy after 2020, now is the right time for advocating the interests of uh, such regions as mine, as Bratislava, and such regions as many of yours. With this opinion, I wanted to bring more visibility to metropolitan regions at the EU level and involve them better in designing the shape of the cohesion policy after 2020. Metropolitan regions are home of three out of every five EU residents, i.e. approximately 60% of our citizens live in metropolitan regions. These regions are often seen as the engines of member states' economies and also the hubs of research and innovation. At the same time, we have to address difficult economic, fiscal and territorial challenges and also expanding the demand for high-quality public services while suffering from limited financing. Because of our relative wealth, metropolitan regions are limited in the ability to draw cohesion funds. While the budget revenues in some metropolitan regions are independent of our economic success and high GDP. And this has, of course, significant effect on the population's overall quality of life. Metropolitan regions have to face great and diverse challenges, such as environment concerns, adaptation to the climate changes, urban poverty, social inclusion, integration of migrants, youth unemployment, crime, and economic transition following the transformation of the old industries, just to name the few. These challenges need to be reflected both in political priorities and also thematically at the EU level. And therefore, I very much welcome the focus on two policy objectives, smart and green. Since the first two policy objectives are in many cases implemented in the metropolitan regions, suitably chosen priorities will enable the member states to fulfill their thematic concentration with the great help of our metropolitan regions. The opinion supports larger flexibility proposed by the European Commission, allowing financial transfers between the categories of regions and recommends going beyond the GDP per capita as the only indicator and the major criterion. Social, demographic and environmental aspects should also be considered when assessing the level of development. The opinion recommends to use the Social Progress Index, uh, SPI, the, methodolo the methodology which identifies the most pressing challenges in metropolitan regions that need to be financed by the cohesion policy. I also call for innovative data collection and development of regional statistics instead of using the national averages. Supporting metropolitan regions can deliver positive spillover effects on wide territories and contribute not only to the EU global competitiveness, but also to regional convergence. Metropolitan regions include rural areas as well. 
The opinion emphasizes the need to work on well-functioning urban-rural links. By concentrating resources and expertise, metropolitan regions can help distributing the wealth and benefits in the given area. They can decrease the fragmentation in governance and they can ensure balanced territorial development. The opinion underlines the need to acknowledge the added value the colleague, of you have to conclude. metropolitan... Now, uh, Christmas time is... A... Okay, Speaking I will be finishing. Out, uh, Give me two more sentences, please. 30 seconds too much. Yeah? Okay, I, two more sentences. So I would like to thank you for all the people who added their amendments. Uh, they definitely improved the text uh, very well. And I thank you for your attention.